I'm here today with the lovely Leo. Hello, hello. It's our first video together. Our it first is. time it is. together. How it's, exciting. I know, people might think that I've taken over from you or something. Oh, <laughs> not, at <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Oh, Ali, you're irreplaceable now. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got to share with you today? We're talking adhesive. Or glue, yeah, whatever you want to call it, we've got a full range here to share with you. So let's get started. That's it. We're going to have a chat about each different glue, the different things you can do with it, recommended uses. If you have any comments or questions about adhesive, let us know. Any preferred adhesive that you like to use and how you like to use it, let us know. We'll uh, we're happy to chat along with you today. Absolutely. So we'll dive in with tacky glue. Share your comments and tell us what's your favourite. Yes, absolutely. And I'll share them. Tell us what your favourite is. I'm here to answer all you know, yeah, Alex, comments. Alex the is... font of all knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I didn't even introduce you, Alex. Oh, I'm right. so sorry. <laughs> no one cares about me when you two are on air anyway. <laughs> Bless you. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> not rude if we don't say it <laughs> we love it well we do uh, we do it doesn't feel like it anyway oh don't be nasty carry on oh bless him so tacky glue we shall start here we shall so we have two different sizes in tacky glue so we have the 240 mil and the 120 mil um and these are nice um big bottles great for all of your really big projects and um, mm. we said MDF projects. So if you're paying to get the MDF units, obviously it's going to be more cost effective for you to get a bigger Absolutely. bottle for a bigger Absolutely. project. Karen has given us a top tip on this as well. If you find the tube a little bit difficult to squeeze, if you peel the label off around the outside, it helps make the tube a little bit softer. Um, so it is going to help you to squeeze that a little bit easier if you need help with that. The other thing is if you struggle, take your top off. It's a PVA based glue. That's mm -hmm. what we've forgotten to tell you. Take your top off. <laughs> Wash out the top in water if you're finding that there's a really, really fine nozzle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that gets clogged. So give it all a good rinse. Pop it, obviously dry it because you don't want any extra water in your glue. Pop it back on and you're off to go again. It's a it's a nice all-round glue fabric. Mm -hmm. Do you... Do you make costumes with the children? You know, I'm not talking about ones that are going to go through the washing machine. I'm talking about fabric that you're making. Halloween costumes and things exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. Do you make little buntings? Mm -hmm. You know, like little hearts to hang up now for Valentine's Day. Glue felt together, bit of cotton. These will be the job for you. Perfect. And since it's a water-based PVA, it is suitable for use for children as well. So, you Absolutely. know, if your kids are crafting along with you, perfect glue for that. So, i got a question on the uh, oh, oh, ask on away. tacky glue. Okay. That, uh, Karen is asking, does it dry clear? It does dry clear. It does dry clear. <laughs> does dry clear. <laughs> Absolutely. The other thing I would probably think of using this for, you know, if you're a glue, like we all glue differently. Mm -hmm. Some people like to use a cocktail stick. So, they'll open up their glue pop a cocktail stick in and then pop that onto the project. This is the type of glue I'd be using. You've got a nice open top. Oh, careful, Al, that's going to go over. I'm worried that's no, going to go over. No, it's not. It's got a lid on it. Oh, good, good. That's what I wanted to show you as well. This is how it comes to you with the seal on the top. Don't forget to pop that seal off. But it's got a nice opening. You can just pop your cocktail stick mm -hmm. in and away to go. Are you making pollen? You know when you make the pollen yes. stamens, pop a bit of glue on that and your pollen on top. Perfect. Perfect. The big bottles as well, if you're doing sort of craft projects with lots of people, you can decant it into smaller containers. So it's another great way of being a little yeah. bit more cost effective if you wanted to sort of buy it in bulk. And with the seal as well, if you do get one of our deals where you get lots of bottles in one go, only open the seal obviously when you're ready to use it just to yeah. keep your glue um, nice and ready for use. And the lid as well also has a little bit on the top um, I don't know if you can just see that extra bit in the top of there that the tip actually fits into, and that helps to keep the tip and the glue um, nice and ready for use as well. In the so top don't there. chop the tip off. Yeah, don't <laughs> tip it too far down, um, or you'll find it doesn't fit properly into the cap anymore, um, and you might find that it starts to dry out a little bit. So, yeah, don't snip too far down. It's also acid-free. Mm -hmm. All our glues are acid-free, so if you're a scrapbooker and you're popping it on your photographs and things, they'll be fine. 
yeah everything is acid free and with it being a liquid glue you get lots of sort of what we call wiggle time um so if you're sticking <laughs> layers and things together and you don't land it quite perfectly first time you've got that little bit of movement if you need to uh, shuffle things around but sometimes slightly. you want a bit more wiggle time than others you do you? absolutely absolutely different glues different purposes different occasions absolutely which is why we sell so many really is okay this is one of this has been our project since i've been with tonic and before and it is sold and sold and sold so we can't be doing something wrong there no because you all love it <laughs> so that's the tacky glue tacky glue then we move on we've got the double-ended pen now this used to be my go-to glue before um before Novo came out, before mm -hmm. the Deluxe Adhesive. So this is a double-ended pen. So let me just show you. Do not squeeze both ends. <laughs> I've done that. I think lots of people have done it. <laughs> so on one end, you've got a spreader. So sometimes, you know, when you put in, I think it's me. You're all right. I think I'm out Go. of focus then. <laughs> um, you know, when you glue in layers together, You've got a spreader that you can spread that glue out with because sometimes we put too much glue. Mm -hmm. When you're putting glue on, less is more. Always, yeah. Because we all tend to go a bit haywire and then you think, oh, I've got lumps in my paper. It's got ripples in it. Come out the edges. Exactly. <laughs> We've all done that. We've all done that, yeah. <laughs> all done They make glue erasers for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> so then you've got your pointed top then. Nice and to give you fine, fine work. Uh, have I missed anything telling you? What have I missed? So it's water PVA again? It is. Yeah. It's PVA, dries clear. Um, ba, 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 ba. Easy to squeeze bottle. If you mm -hmm. struggle with these, this is easier to squeeze. The top is slightly bigger on these than the tacky glue. So maybe that affects how you want, you know, how how your choice in glue goes um these are 29.5 mils as well but they do go a long way and again it gives you wiggle time mm -hmm. which we know sometimes we need oh we always need a bit of wiggle time we love a bit of wiggle time <laughs> Um, and again, it's great for gluing lots of different mediums. So your fabric, um, paper and card, obviously, your MDF, um, lots of different things that you can use that on. Excellent. For all of your different crafting needs. Where are we going next? Adhesive tape runners. So we've got two different versions of these. Now that one, you can have that one. So what's the difference? So Al has there the um, fold strip runner. Um, so it is a full strip of tape all the way across. Oh, I can hear myself, Alex. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Um, so the full strip, as it sounds, has a full strip of adhesive. Um, and then the mini version is a dotted adhesive. And I'm going to grab in some card just so we can give it a go. So when you're using the full strip, it's ergonomic as well. And there's mm. a little thumb piece on the top, a finger piece rather, not a thumb. <laughs> Talk rubbish, Al. <laughs> Hang on, nice I've got that the wrong forward. way. There we are. So make sure that you twist at the end, because otherwise you're going to keep the adhesive going. You need to break off that adhesive. That's it. I don't know whether you can see it. I've popped it along the bottom. It is clear. Just, maybe. Maybe just. Oh, you can just see a reflect mm, in there. Yeah. And then I've got the dotted version. Now this one is ever so slightly pale blue. And um, you can actually see the blue colour in the runner. And maybe you can just about see it on the card there, possibly. Again, towards the light, then you just get it. There, yeah. There and this one is slightly dotted. Um, now with the dotted, you can rub this away. So if you have put it in the wrong place, you can just sort of ball it up and get rid of it and it won't rip your card and i'm demoing that live on youtube so you know i'm not lying to you exactly <laughs> <laughs> there you go but you can rub that away so if you do put it in the wrong place it will rub away and that's... well sometimes you want to try things don't you that's does it, it work there yeah 
give it a go. It is a slightly temporary adhesive, so you can move it around if you need to. It's temporary to start off with, and then it will make a permanent bond once it's sort of grabbed for a little while. So if you are unsure about your card layers and you want yeah. to try them out first, probably the uh, dotted runner would be the one for you there. So quick mention you, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. As just said, you should have done the tape runners on coloured cards to show them. We should have. Uh, but... What effect will I have on the on the glue if you use like the blue that the, the blue dotted? Would show you. No, it dries None clear. At all. So you're not really gonna be able to tell a difference with there we are, we'll pop them both on. Yeah. There we are. I didn't twist it then. And you had a little bit extra glue on the edge. Yeah, so you can you can probably see it a little bit better on the red. So you've got the dotted one up here and the full strip one across there. But you're, because these are a dry adhesive, the reason that I like using these personally is for layering cards. You don't yeah. get that kind of, well, you don't get glue splurge around the edges <laughs> if you put too much on. Um, but also sometimes when you use a wet glue on cardstock, you get that slight kind of wet or damp wrinkle in the middle of your card mm -hmm. layers. So to avoid that, one of these tape runners would be an obvious choice for that. And um, these are speed. Absolutely, super fast. If I mean, you're a speed crafter, mm -hmm, just zip, off zip, zip, you go, yeah, isn't it? Around the edges. So thank, you for the top, thank you for the top tip on the coloured card as well then, Joanna. <laughs> yeah, we you. just grabbed what we had in front of us then. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened to be white. It did. Again, they are acid-free. Um, and because it is a dry glue, perfect for your scrapbooking. You're not going to warp your photos and um, putting this on the back. So Absolutely. great for mounting photos or even mounting them into photo frames. Yeah. If you want the photos to stick nicely in a frame. Yeah, because they slipped and they yeah, sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Put a little bit of that on the back. It holds them nicely. And your photos are not damaged either then. You can just take them out and they'll be absolutely fine. So it'll peel off okay, will it? Yeah. Oh, your photos wonderful. will peel off, yeah. yeah. If you need them to. Yeah. So you've got the dotted one is only 5 mil wide and the full strip is 8 mil wide. So you can vary it up depending on the kind of project that you're doing. Again, every adhesive has its own uh, special use. So exactly. depending on what you're using it for, you can pick the right one for that. Again, if you've got children in school, mm -hmm. they often glue sheets into their books now they haven't got a tube of glue that's going to spill all over their pencil case and this is so tiny it's nice and easy to check exactly. into a pencil case for them yeah, i would perfect. say that one and i'm going to jump ahead now yeah seeing as we're talking about <laughs> children and their pencil cases yeah we also do the little stick glues so we've got the two sizes so one is, let me just tell you, I can't remember how much is in them. You have eight, eight in that one, 21 in the bigger one. So there's a heck of a lot of difference. And they, grow, they come out purple. Oh, they are funky. I know, it is a bit funky. <laughs> <laughs> they used to be for, called funky. But it still says it, doesn't it, on them? So it does funky it say funky? funky stick? Oh, it does. does. Yeah, there we go. I thought they changed the name of that. Because this glue pen used to be funky glue as well. And then it had a change of heart and it became <laughs> out of blended. Um, so again, these are perfect for your scrapbooking. Personally, I wouldn't use them on card making unless it's a card that you, you're not going to pop in the drawer. You know, if it's a quick one you know you're not going to use again, then I wouldn't use these for card making because I don't think the adhesive is strong enough. But for schoolwork, for children's gluing, Easy to clean, mm -hmm. no problem there. I think they're fabulous. I have a note here as well about it being repositionable. So it doesn't dry Absolutely. as much as it cures. Um, so when you first put the two layers together, it's not like an instant bond. So you can, you know, peel it back up and move it again yeah. if you need to. Yeah. And top tip. Absolutely. You know when you want to glue stamps to your stamp block? Either your stamp block, your platform, whatever. If they haven't, if they've lost their tackiness, mm -hmm. that is what I would use. It's easy to clean afterwards. You can clean off the back of your stamp and your stamp platform. So that would be my top tip for that one. Tip hey. for that one. <laughs> so where are we going next? Oh, we've got so many of these cards. Leo's been marvellous right in these. <laughs> Alex's Alex <laughs> production value has been uh, rubbing off on me, obviously. <laughs> A little fingers. There was flames coming out of it. <laughs> I hope they look better than my cards, though, because I'm they definitely... They look fabulous. Look, there's all the info. <laughs> all the info. Plus, I didn't think I'd remember all of this, you know, on the spot. That was the problem. <laughs> when we're talking about them all... 
there's there's so many different things to remember but we we can't Oh, I forget. couldn't remember all of it. And we've got our favourites that we go to all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely, which would be this, this one. one. And Gara V, isn't it? Every single Gara video, v, every one. make we do, you will have seen a bottle of Nouveau Deluxe. Absolutely. Anyone would think it's all we use, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it really isn't. But when we film in, we want a quick grab. Mm -hmm. We want a fine nozzle because mm -hmm. sometimes we glue in layers you know, the fine, fine layers. So we want something that's got a fine nib. We want something that's going to grab quick. So this is a pretty fine top there. Yeah, it is. Very tiny. Absolutely. So this is our highest concentration of PVA. Um, it is a white formula, so you will see it white on your cardstock when you're putting it down, but it does dry clear. It does. Again, it's acid-free, um, so safe for use in all of your scrapbooking projects. It's 60 mil in a bottle, and it does last a very long time, unless you craft to the kind of level that we craft. Yeah, <laughs> but it does last us quite it does, a while. Yeah, yeah. It's not often, you know, we, we don't have a new bottle every week. Oh, God, no. It lasts a good, good few weeks, maybe, I'd say over a month. Yeah, probably. Over a month. When it's in stock, even I bulk order this because I cannot be without no, it. You don't want to run out of glue. Never. No. Never want to run out of glue. We put a bulk order in for the craft room. And then we hide it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if to. someone comes in for glue. No, nope, we don't have any. No, sorry. We have got any. Sorry, no, no glue here. Why do you just share as a box, a glue box? <laughs> box That's glue why I'm so box. tall. Because I sit on the glue stash. <laughs> This is really easy to squeeze, mm -hmm. but again, if you find it, we're ignoring that, Al. <laughs> <laughs> if you find it tough, take your labels off, mm -hmm. because that will, again, make the bottle easier to, to squeeze. Yeah, it's a nice shaped bottle for holding it is. as well. It, it is. is. It just sits comfortably it in does. your hand. Perfect. Joanna's just said that she's got one deluxe on the go and six back up in there. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You never know when you're going to have to have a big order coming in. You know, you may have a load of cards wanted, mm -hmm. so you've got to have your glue there ready. And this is so popular that it very rarely stays in stock as well. Absolutely. Once, once it's available, everyone buys it and then it's gone again it's until gone. it next comes in. And like I said, you never want to be without glue. So whenever it is available, we would recommend that you do <laughs> stock up. I can't imagine having to stop a project because you've run out of glue. Oh, no, not at all. No, not I, at I all. Wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be I don't think any crafter will be without a glue. No, no, definitely not. So that's that one. Well, um, again, multiple surfaces this one works on. Oh, absolutely. This again is a PVA based and it's the highest amount of PVA that you can put in a glue because there's different levels of PVA. These are PVA based, but there's a lesser amount in these, I believe, than there is in here. Because mm -hmm. when we were testing, we wanted the most PVA. That's why we've got a quicker grab. That's it. And so that's you don't have to sit glue. and hold your layers together or your box corners together for hours waiting pegs. for it to dry. Pegs oh, yeah. might pegs used to be. And then you've got a peg mark on it then. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Not what you want. No. Not what you want. So, yeah, nice and fast, which is why, as you say, we use it on all our videos. Because Exactly. You don't want to be watching us sticking A couple layers of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes I've gone a little bit too fast and they haven't grabbed. But that's usually me. It's because I want to get ahead. Mm hmm you don't want to be there watching glue dry, do you? No, <laughs> no. That's not no mind about paint. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching glue become clear. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that would be a fun time lapse to do, I'm sure, but you, you don't oh, want to yeah. watch it live. <laughs> no. But that's, that's got to be my favourite. Our favourite glue. I mean, we shouldn't have favourites, right? It's like having a favourite child, but that is a favourite. It is. Definitely. <laughs> so you guys ready for a question? Yeah, absolutely. So Shoot. we might be covering this later in the show. Okay. But Teresa has asked, which glue do you recommend for ribbon? Sometimes uh, it creates rises and does not attack uh, well, but maybe maybe Teresa's wrong, but I don't think so. I think that's if a great I question. Drag this in. So we have these folded over ribbon ends on the top of here. And I watched how we do this the other day. <laughs> and we would use red line tape. That's and we will come to a red line tape in a little while. But yes, um, it's a dry adhesive. So you're yeah. not going to get that bubbling in your ribbon. Um, you've got lots of different widths as well in red line tape. So pick one that's perfect. And it's a nice permanent adhesive. So I don't know if you can just see that the ribbon is folded over on the edge of there. No knots. It's a nice smooth fold over the edge. So just a tiny bit of red line tape in there stick the two ends together. Hope that answers that. 
I would if I'm putting a bow on something though, I would always use a hot glue. Yes. Because it's gonna peel off. You're gonna knock it and it's always gonna peel off. If you put in a strip of ribbon, then again I would use a red line tape. Hope that's thank us. you very much. I hope that answers your question, Teresa. I've got another question, but it's on something that we've already covered. That's so, okay. Uh Denise is asking, uh, what is the best way to get the glue pen 206N to work? I think you've got a in. <gasps> look at you go. Now, hang on. I've got to look at these because I don't do. Is it this is it one? The one? Probably. I think it may be this one. Give me a yes if, if I got the right. Yeah, it's this one. How would I start it? So this is a new. Is it a new one? Maybe it not. Is. is it? I don't know. They usually come with a little... Like a wax bead or something. Yeah, at the end, on the end. They? I don't know what to call that there. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, take that off. Press the pen down. Right, hopefully you can see this. Give it a squeeze and keep pressing. You're basically priming it. So there is like a, it's a rollable nib. Um, so there is a ball in the end. So you do there need to are. push in order to push the ball up to allow the glue to flow. But the squeeze is also important. Yeah, press and a squeeze. And then you'll see you'll get a little pool then. And then you're right. ready to go. And different pressure will give you a different thickness of absolutely blue stripes. You can get a really thick stripe. Or with the precision one, you can get a very, very fine stripe as well. Absolutely. I think I think this is the, what we're talking about next anyway. So we shall do that. So on this little project here, the reason that I love the precision nib, it fits perfectly into the deboss edges around die cuts. <gasps> So um, you can run oh, this way. Um, so what I did is I ran the precision nib just around the edge, that sort of debossed edge in my die cut here, um, and then poured some glitter over the edge just to give you that really fine little glittered detail um, in there. So that is a great way of um, adding that little bit of extra texture and detail with that glue. But we do the glue pens in three different sizes. So you've got your little precision one. What would I use that one for? You've shown your glitter in around mm -hmm. the edges. I'm thinking fairy wings, you know, when you yep. just want that tiny little bit, maybe stamens in flowers, a little bit of snow edging. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're a, not a glitter person, <laughs> but you feel that you need to add a little bit of Christmas, that's what you need. Because that will add the finest amount for you. Nice little dots of snow in the background of things. Absolutely. Like falling snow if you wanted to do that. Absolutely. Then we get a bit bigger. So this nib, these two are chisel nibs. Hang on now. Let me take the sticky off. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a bit of a, a bigger nib there. There we are. There's your chisel. And then you go to... Hang on, stick it off. You go to the big mama. This is your bigger project. Look at the size on that one as opposed to that one. So there's a huge amount of difference. So why would I want the bigger one? Do you do calligraphy? Because mm -hmm. to me, these say calligraphy. The bullet tips, if you can do, you know, the fine rise and the, the wider bits, I can't do it. But I would imagine these would look stunning, gilded, glittered, anything like that in calligraphy, mm -hmm. then you need these. Jo, I think, is actually quite good at calligraphy because she's done a couple for the um, branding and marketing. <coughs> Excuse me. Is Sam in our design team. Is our, she our really? Our actual graphic designer, wow. Sam. Maybe we'll go and ask her to do some for us then. We'll have to. And if she's not, she's going to hit me. <laughs> she is. Our best is over there now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you prime these? Because these come and that's dry. It's a little bit crunchy. So how do you prime these? Again, just pump. So very similar to the glitter markers as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. The... So there just keep go. going and you'll see the glue comes down the nib. You can see it growing blue. And there we are. We're at the bottom. So that is it. So what would I use these for? I wouldn't use them for putting a card together because I don't think they're strong enough. Um, again, do you want a temporary card? They're a two-way glue. If you put the glue on and leave it dry, then you get a permanent adhesive. 
if you leave it and it's wet and you put your stuff on, it's not permanent. You can rub it off. I got a question here from Joanna okay. who's asking if the chis chisel tips are like zig two-way glues for edges of card and glitter. They absolutely are. Here you go. Absolutely. Got a partially started one here. So we've done a little bit and probably you can just see, yeah, that's probably a better camera for that. So Alison has just run the chisel tip right along the very edge. So the glue has just gone ever so slightly over both sides and then added some gilding flakes on here um, just to gild the edge of the card. We'll show you how to do that after. Yeah. It's, it's so easy. You'll wonder why you haven't done that. And with gilding, so we would say if you're adding glitter, you want to add it as soon as you put the glue down while it's still nice and wet. If you're adding gilding flakes, you want to leave it to go slightly yeah. tacky before you add the gilding flakes over the top. Um, obviously, the chisel tips are going to be nice straight lines for you if you can keep them nice and straight. <laughs> so if you wanted to run but a they straight will, line. But they will get a little dink. If you go down straight edges a lot, then you will get a little dip in the centre. Mm -hmm. And again, that could help with calligraphy because you can do those, or you know, when they've got the letters. double ones. Yes. So another tip. We yeah. need to find someone who does calligraphy. We're going Absolutely. to do a nice range of glittered and gilded calligraphy. There oh, we go. Sam, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> There's bound to be someone in this building that can do calligraphy, I'm sure. Absolutely. I would say that I've been on a one-day calligraphy course. We don't need to know that. <gasps> <gasps> oh, she didn't tell me that when we were doing these. I did these. it with like a pen and an ink and oh, nib, did you? So I'm not sure. I could give it a try, but I couldn't promise it would be good. Here we are. We'll move that out of the way. Yeah, so we don't stick our elbow in it. something in there. So I think that is... Is our little pen? So they they glitter in, they gild in. Um, sand. You mm -hmm. can pop a little bit of sand with them. Um, Fine detail things, basically. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. For the precision, obviously, probably not your big chisel tip for fine detail. No, <laughs> it depends how big that project is. That could oh, well that be, could fine be a fine detail. detail. Yeah, it could be on a huge background. <clears throat> we love we love a look at where the uh, at the video that Leo made the which you use the pen. And I'll put it in the comments below. Oh, brilliant. Um, I'm going to say it's the, the Harvest Moon trend. I think like, it, yeah, I think Looking at the colours on it, yeah. I'm going to hazard a guess. I think it was Harvest Moon trend. trend. It was back, yeah. in, back in October, I think. But I'll find the link and drop it into the comments for anyone who wants to The other know. thing, I'm looking at that. I know one thing I haven't told you. The little one, paper piecing. Yes. Just thought that now. Nice paper Paper piecing. Tip. Because you can go inside your panels. Oh, sorry. Go inside your panels with your glue pen and then just pop your little um, your little pieces in. Yeah. Be careful you don't put too much because sometimes you get a little bit of a tacky edge. So just be careful on how much you're putting in there. So that's one idea for that. So, someone called Rachel uh, has just said I was about to say Leo went on a calligraphy course and uh, that's off her fancy nibs. Oh, Rachel, you <laughs> <just> roll <laughs> it under the vest now. <laughs> there it goes, yeah, rolling over me. Thank you very much for reminding everyone of that one. <laughs> You're going to go pink yeah, now, I, I know. Yeah, I that's fine, Alex, I appreciate that. A bit more colour in my face so I don't wash out the video. <laughs> You make me sound like a monster. Oh, you know. He says it every time, though. He says I'm the only one that he has to add colour to in his videos because I'm so pale. And oh, do you, Leo. you know who was setting up the other day? Do you know what he did? He turned on all of the lights. He said, oh, look, Leo's disappeared because you literally couldn't see oh. him. No, I didn't. That's a, that's <laughs> how I was in the room. <laughs> that is hugely unprofessional. I can't believe you'd suggest such a thing. <laughs> Oh, bless. Anyway, what's next? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, we're going to talk about tissue tape, which is actually one of the ones I quite like. I'm quite used to using it. So again, we have two different widths in tissue tape. So we have a 6mm and a 12mm. Okay, it holds on this way so you can actually see the difference between the two. And this again, so it's another dry glue. Um, so all of the times that we would recommend a dry glue, um, things that you don't want to get wavy, um, acid free again, so we can yes. use it for all of our scrapbooking projects. Why do we call it tissue tape oh. as well? I was just wondering that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's terrible. That's the just rip it. so it's nice and quick for putting things together. You don't have to sit there with a pair of scissors snipping your bits of tape, you can just pop it down when you pop it to the end. When you pop it down as well, it's flat. 
you've got a little bit of a raise with the red line here but this is absolutely flat to your card so again i've popped it on white which is not a very good demo <laughs> here we go oh. let's grab the but, red back um, in here we go joanna's going to shout at us again <laughs> sorry joanna sorry joanna she told us and we didn't listen did we we didn't there we are we love the red card there we go. You can see so again, there. it's a little bit of a milky colour, mm -hmm. but you could add your glitter, anything to that then, couldn't you? So gilding flakes is one that I would absolutely use with tissue tape, I was about to say yeah. tearing tape, tissue tape. Yeah. Um, because it does have that low profile, it's nice and flat. If you just want to gild right on the very edge, I think on the edge of that box over there, we've done some. Um, so if you just want to gild right on the very edge of a layer and you don't want to have that kind of raised bump, um, then tissue tape is probably there the perfect are. one for that. It's got a nice amount of tack that's going to hold your gilding plates nicely as well. While that's you're working perfectly with them. smooth. It's like there's nothing on there at all. Here we go absolutely perfectly Thanks, smooth um someone also suggested for wrapping presents as well if you um you know that posh wrapping where you do it all hidden you don't see any of your tape on the outside because it is terrible it's gonna be nice and easy to do you don't have to be holding a present and a pair of scissors and the tape and everything else all in one go pop a bit under tear off the end and then you can awesome. stick your presents together nice bit of hidden wrapping shows you nice wrapping yeah yes if, we, you, if you do fancy wrapping, I love to see wrapping videos. They are just amazing. I've never done them. I do sometimes use double-sided just to hide the... Because otherwise you get a big piece of cellar tape, don't you? My wife would hate not being able to see the wrapping paper with the, the amount of tape she puts on that. Oh, does she? puts on her present. She wants to make it a real challenge for you to get Did it. Get in? It's, yeah. like, it's like a pass the parcel. <laughs> and then wrap it around the, then. <laughs> Well, you get more joy out of it then, don't you? <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> Feel like you earned it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Tissue tape out of the way. And I know Karen likes to wear it on a hand, like yes, a bracelet. Yeah, so have a nice big. And that's how she. <laughs> yeah. That's how she wears it and Central. then puts it on. It makes it easier for rolling it if it's on your wrist. If you're doing lots of parcels, I yeah. completely understand where she's coming from. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Onward. That's out of tissue tape. Ah. Oh. Then red I line. couldn't live without this either. I don't think any of us could. I know. So we've got a red line tape. So again, we've got three different widths in this one. We've got a three mil, a super fine, six mil, and twelve mil. Um, so that's the actual thickness of the tape on the side. Um, this is incredibly sticky and it is a very instant grab. So this is why you tend to see us using this when we're doing construction videos uh, where we're putting boxes together um, because literally as soon as you put those two pieces together, that's it, that's stuck and yeah. you're done. It's nice yeah. and fast. Um, it is really good for making boxes for that reason because it is quite permanent. Um, you know, it's not going to move too much, but generally we would say a wet glue yeah. for boxes that you're going to be opening and closing a lot of. If it's just a little decorative thing that you're not going yeah. to touch, then a red line would be good. But for The only time I would use this is with your Miri and your satin cards yes. because your wet glue doesn't sink into that layer. And that's how your two wet glues stick together. They sink into the layers and they, they bind the layers together. So with anything that's got a shiny surface, then I would use these. If I'm using glitter card, going back, it would be a wet glue. Because it will sink into the pieces of yeah. glitter and give you that Yeah, because yeah. you want it to go between the pieces of glitter as well. Mm -hmm. Joanna's just uh, commented that uh, red, line, red line tape is good for glitter effects on cards too. It certainly too. is. So if you want a precision line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and gilding effect. I have a little a little demo that I've set up over here. So I have started making myself a little background using red line tape because it comes in different widths. I can do different patterns. So I've got the really thin one that I've gilded in silver. I've got the thick one that I've gilded in gold. And I'm going to finish off. And you've got the texture with it. You have as if, well, so you kind of feel it, can't you, in yeah. the background? You know, you can use tissue tape or red line, but it Absolutely. depends. Do you want that texture? So sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, isn't it? I'm gonna peel this off with my trusty craft pick. Add to the uh, red line tape rubbish around the studio. <laughs> <laughs> 
Didn't we have some top tips the other day, Alex, on uh, dealing yes, we with did. this stuff? Yes, we did. Because uh, this stuff is very static. -y. It just sticks to everything. Uh, Craig, Craig <laughs> mentioned on our live, on one of the videos we put out on Thursday, I think it was the launch of our show kit, no, the kit, the launch of the kit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> he suggested an anti-static cloth. And that's wiping it down with an anti-static cloth to um to pick it up off the off the floor. Mm -hmm. Good yeah, idea. Yeah. Good Very idea. Clever. Top tip indeed. We've actually got a question on gil on glues and gilding flakes. Okay. Okay. So Sharon was asking, and she did ask earlier. So I did say I could see a box of gilding flakes <laughs> floating around. So I, I thought we'd come to it. Uh, but she asked, "What's the best glues to use with gilding flakes, uh, glitter, and or sequins?" So it's actually a, there's actually a couple of questions in there. Um, depends what, what, what you, you want to do with it. Yeah, so absolutely depends, on the depends what you want to do. Wanna, probably. If I wanted to use it on an edging of something, then I would go to our pens. If I wanted to do a stripe, because there's no way I'm going to draw straight stripes. And you can uncover one piece at a time when you're using tape. When you're using a pen, you've drawn your lines and they're all going to get covered in the same colour. Yeah. With this, you can alternate your colours. So I think that's a good idea. Again, if I can just... Hang on, I'm going to squeeze you round. Yeah. No, it's a oh, um... <laughs> <laughs> This was a bit of gilding on here. Because obviously you've got a bit of gilding on a book of now. So I've gone over, I've cut, I cut it and embossed it. Then I've gone over it with the large pen. And then I've popped a little bit of gilding flakes on there. And then I've distressed it afterwards. So I've used one of these brushes, which is my go-to. I could, uh, thank you very so you much. You could have a, a little <laughs> go with that. So obviously it depends on if you want a nice sparkly finish, then you're only going to do it gently. If you want a little bit distressed, then you're going to do it a little bit more harshly. Yeah, nice brushed metal finish in there. Look at, look at Leo, how clean and tidy she's kept that. I'd have gilding flakes all over the room. Yes, you would. I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Messy. There you go. I've kind of started building up my background using the different widths and then giving them different spacing. And like I said, you can tear off one piece at a time. So I was able to do the different colours without getting them all cross-pollinated. <laughs> we definitely don't want that. And again, with glitter, what sort of effect do you want? Do you want a raised effect? If you want a raised effect, then I would possibly go to use our crystal drops because they will give you a dome and you can glitter on top of them. If you just want a small amount, then I would obviously go with a precision pen. If you're a super glitterer, then I may go with a bigger pen or I may even go with an acetate sheet. If you're intrigued by the use of crystal drops um, and glitter, next week Leo's got a tutorial that covers drops in great detail <laughs> and does actually cover that as a technique yes excellent we do a glittered drop so yeah look out for that one i think that's coming on that's coming on the first so what's that is that next or week two that's, day? that's a couple of weeks away yeah but uh next keep, week isn't it no week after week oh after. is that yeah do you know i don't even know what date it no, is no i know oh is it next week it i think be. it is next what's week what's the 24th today this is what's happened this is what it's like here all the time just lose track of everything. Gone. We certainly do. I never know the date. <laughs> when I used to work, but I had to write the date every day, then I knew it instinctively. Now, I don't write the date down, so I don't get it in my head. No. Uh, Sharon also asked about sequins. Are we going to cover sequins? Sequins. A later? Sequins. I would pop a little bit of deluxe. Yeah. Because you can pop it on a small, small area. I know one thing we didn't say about deluxe. You can stick onto acetate with it. I wouldn't join acetate, but I would stick on to it with this because mm -hmm. it dries clear. Didn't we do that on here? I did. There we go. Pop so here's sequins popped on the sides there. See a bit of sparkle. And it's on acetate underneath. So it's on a mirror card and acetate. And I've used the deluxe adhesive on them. Because you only want a tiny bit again. I wouldn't worry about it coming through the hole. But you don't want it splurging out from underneath everywhere. 
So the smallest amount and using that. And so it dries clear, so you're not going to see a little bit coming through the hole. Exactly. I guess you've got like a really dark sequin, but you can always put your sequin to one side of the dots. You're catching sort of yeah. one edge of your sequin, yeah. depending on the colour of your sequin. Exactly. So then we've got our foam pads. Yes. So again, these are four. They're four. <laughs> you know, I had a week last week, but I couldn't count. <laughs> Three sizes. So we have five millimeter, twelve millimeter, and twenty-five millimeter. So, what are you going to use these for? Every single project that you make, they're all going to have an adhesive um, square on them. Great for adding dimension, raising things up slightly. So again, I've popped some embellishments on here. These are done with the foam pads. If you want a bit of depth to anything, pile them up. Mm -hmm. You can die cut them as well. Can I've you? tested this, yes. You can you die can. cut them. I would probably go for, I wouldn't recommend using the five no, mil don't, squares. No, don't die cut the little I'd, ones. I'd go for the bigger ones if you can. Um, peel off your top layer, stick your card on. Yeah. Your paper, run it through your die cutting machine. It is going to groan a little bit. Obviously, it is that little bit thicker than a, a standard sheet of cardstock, so it is going to groan a little bit, but it will go through. Um, and then you can have, say, you were cutting out letters mm. or a sentiment or something like that, and you don't want to try and piece together tiny little bits of uh, foam pads all across the back. Cut it out like this, and you've got all of that nice dimension and height without all of the uh, tiny snipping that goes on. And they don't crash. They don't crash. They were exactly. ping back as well. So it will run through the die cut machine and it will still have that puff and that dimension. When we were ordering, when we were looking to buy in foam pads in the beginning, that was one of the things I wanted, that it didn't crash on your project because they never ping back. Once they've crushed some of them, they stay flat. Yeah. And they don't maintain that depth. So yeah. definitely Top worth tip. a go. <laughs> Right, we're gonna to have to do a video on die cutting with foam pads now, aren't we? So we are. We keep will. an eye out for that one as well. I would go for your biggest pads, unless you've got really teeny tiny projects. Because I know if you've got decoupage, then you use the smallest of of little foam pads. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I would go for the biggest you can get and cut them down. Sophie upstairs has also said you can also colour the sides so they'll stand up as well. Yes, you can. You yeah. can get your alcohol marker. On the sides of them, if you're doing a dark project. Yeah. Top tip. Thank you very much, Thanks, Sophie. Sophie. <laughs> Again. Um, oh, sorry. I was going to say shaker cards. Absolutely. You know, for building up where you've got your acetate layer for your window and then you've got your background. Your foam pads will make that you know, depth to uh, give you the space for all of your sequins and confetti. And if you want to put more layers, put more layers on Yeah, there. you can stack them on top of each other. They will stick together nicely. And again, acid and lignin free. It's a perfect, perfect. for your scrapbooking. Excellent. The other thing we didn't say when we did the gilding along the edge, mm -hmm. if you're a scrapbooker, what about the edges of your book? Yeah. That would give it that luxurious effect, wouldn't it? Yeah, a nice bit of gilding around the edge would be perfect. Once you've done all of your pages mm -hmm. and it's all set, if you do it yearly or monthly or however you have your books, yeah, once you're done, just give them all a nice gild around the I edge. think that would be awesome. Yeah, perfect. And our last bit, adhesive sheets. Oh, I love these adhesive sheets. They come in a pack of five and perfectly die cuttable. You can, I use these so, so much. You know, you think, oh, they're in my drawer. I never use them. You really need to use these. Pop a piece of card on one side and then die cut it. So you can pop your glitters your gilding, anything onto your die cut. Um, paper piecing again. Mm -hmm. So you've cut your outer edge and you've stuck it down. So I think I did that with this one, actually. It's on acetate. And I wanted the dome effect. So how am I going to get edge-to-edge -edge adhesion? The only way I'm going to get it is with an adhesive sheet. So I've cut these on the adhesive sheet and then pop them on. But I could have used all those spare bits to paper piece the next one. So don't waste them, because it's great for paper piecing. Uh, what else have we got for it? Uh, as I say, curved surfaces on acetate, on mirror card, mm -hmm. anything like that. 
Uh, bu, 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 bu. So you can do it two ways. You can either have your, um, so if you're running through a die cutting machine, for example, you can either have cardstock, adhesive sheet, and die cut, and then yeah. you can apply your glitter because it will stick to the front of your die cut. Yeah. If you have adhesive sheet, cardstock, die cut, you can then use it to apply your die cut to something with you the can. adhesive. Or you could do both, I guess, you if can. you wanted to glitter it and also stick it to something. So that would be leave the die, leave the card stock out the la. So just die cut the sheet. Just directly. die cut the sheet. Yeah. If I had a piece of acetate, then maybe say I wanted to do a window. Um, what do you call them? Sun catcher. Mm -hmm. Die cut the adhesive sheet. Take your one side off, stick it onto the acetate, and then pop your glitter because a lot of the glitters are translucent. So you will definitely see that sparkle coming through them. So that's what I would do with that. And I've got a little demo to share with you. Ooh. Hold on, I'm going to make a bit of space first. <laughs> Clear the decks. <laughs> oh, because I am a bit messy. So here it is, all bagged up, ready. I thought I would share with you. It's not a new technique and it's been around for years. But such an easy technique to do. Little pretty bit of glitter in. So what have I got? So I've got my sheet of my card. I've got a bit of lace and my brushes. So I'm going to pop my adhesive sheet onto my card. Catch the edge of it first. You know, he never wants to come out. <laughs> the tongue will come out in a minute. Yeah. Now, there we are. So, pop my card onto my sheet. There we go. So, put your, your sticky sheet back on. And you want to make sure that it's stuck everywhere. So, I've got one of our spreader tools. Because I just want to make sure that it is all stuck. So I'm going to trim with the scissors the excess off because otherwise that's going to pick up all the glitter as well. <laughs> and they'll be glittered. There'll be enough glitter <laughs> as it is. Believe you me. So you can see it's easily cuttable, trimmable. And I wouldn't waste this bit. No problem. Sheet back on this it goes back on the sheet. Use it for something else. Here we are. Not the side with all the glitter on either. <laughs> so we'll pop that on there. And we can do something else with that. That could be a word that I've cut out along the bottom there. Right. Let's put them on the side. So again, I'm going to pop the sheet off. The carrier sheet. And then I've got a piece of lace. So this is from an old net curtain. So pick the bit you like. What do I like here? I quite like that swirl in the bottom. Because what I would say is if you want it for a project, maybe cut it a little bit bigger and you can trim it down to size then. There we go. So let's move that one so we don't end up with that. I'm going to pop well. a piece of card underneath that. Because it's going to go everywhere, isn't it? <laughs> we just know that, don't we? We were all quite twinkly when we were trying this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. My <laughs> shoes, my trousers. And why did I come in wearing black today? I know, I'm just thinking I've got black tights on too, so I'm going to be going home sparkly. That was a bit silly of me, wasn't it? So just go a bit gung-ho with your sparkles. So, card. I may do. I'll just brush this all over. And for this, you're going to want a lace that has a pattern that's more filled in, so the glitter isn't yes. going to stick where the pattern is. So I'm going to take that off first. So tip all that before. Oh, there we are. We've got a bit of a collection underneath going on. Yeah. We are now sparkling. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, Leo. That's fine. I don't mind being twinkly. 
you like a bit of twinkle, don't you? So take that layer of lace off and then use your contrasting colour. I would have two colours that are very different. You know, you could go with a black and a red or something like that. So give that a little bit of a shake around. Sophie's just said everyone upstairs is glued to their screen watching. Ah! Oh, there we are. I've missed a little bit in the corner. And then we can give this. I'm going to use the other side. I'm just going to move to one side. <laughs> to and I'm doing this gently. There we are. And there is your lace demo. So we've done a reverse colourway. And there's your, your glitter. Well done, Al. There we are. You said that, that, that was quite a simple technique, but it, it looks is amazing, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Look, it's a lovely background. It looks like you. It looks like it's taken in ages. Well, it did. You just saw me. <laughs> ages and ages. You're giving away all of our secrets now. Um. Rachel's asking a question, Al. Okay. Um, any tips on keeping back in scraps in the bin? Uh, Leo tends to leave a trail of them behind her when she's been busy. She crafting. does. She does. <laughs> um, oh, I haven't so got much. a tip for them because I think every crafter yep, that's it. leaves a trail of backing bits off the form squares mm -hmm. and your tape. Yeah. It's because they're static -y. It is. It is. Yeah, I, mean, I know exactly what she means because we end up hoovering them up and there'll be a trail. You can see where I've gone to the kitchen. You can see where I've gone upstairs. I do it upstairs here as well. I leave trails of bits of stuff. They stick to your shoes yeah. as you walk out. They're just there. Okay, so I find you if I've lost you. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. It's like our, it's our <laughs> breadcrumb trail. That's what it is. If you if you need to find a crafter, just follow the bits of uh, foam tape or backing strips. You'll, you'll find one of us. <laughs> The other thing I was going to show you as well, and I don't think we mentioned it as we were talking. We didn't mention, no. You can we were naughty. on our adhesive sheets. They are heat resistant. So what I've done, I've stuck it onto card. I've stuck the adhesive sheet onto card, and then I've die cut it. And that's where you can get. So I'm just going to take the top bit off. So this time you've got the adhesive sheet on top. Adhesive of the is card. on top. So yeah, this card time. adhesive and then dye. Yes. Oh come on! There we are. I need a better pair of nails, don't I? Need you with nails. Oh, Have we know. got a piece Cut of um, another, another of piece of card? Let's do a bit of red this time. Come on interest. then. So. You may have had embossing powders and you think, I'm not a stamper, I'm not going to use them. But you can try this. Because I'm going to show you a triple embossing effect with this. That sounds very, very technical, doesn't it? Does, it? Doesn't it? <laughs> you know, if you like that enamel block, that's exactly what you're going to get. So I'm going to move this out the way and then I'm going to grab my heat gun. I probably should have bought Loud noises system. incoming. Um, <laughs> sorry, it is going to be a I'm bit sorry, noisy. I'm sorry, I'll turn the mics down a little. This extension lead is not quite long. Do you want me to hold it? Do you want me? That's fine. Look at this, we're getting really tech. <laughs> now. So I'm going to use my scissors because I don't want a melted nail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe be a little bit. There we are. So just hold it in one place and then watch it melt. I love watching this melt. There we go. The other thing I noticed, it didn't seem to matter. Pop it back in your embossing powder didn't seem to matter i don't think i've heated that enough there Good. Right. i'm going to heat it all over now 
and then pop it back in. It's not that soft, so I don't know. I don't think I did warm enough last time. So you want the embossing powder to still be tacky and to put it back in so it'll pick up another layer. And then you just keep going. Move your finger. <laughs> this is like chasing it under the desk. You don't yeah. need a pair of those tweezers. I do. I do. So again, heat it up. Be careful, mind. I'm being a little bit ginger with it because it does get really hot. Yeah, so this fingers. one now, I'm going to do again with the scissors because I'm going to keep my fingers out. Carol's on a job, isn't it? Absolutely. You burn your fingers. There we go. So just keep going until you've got the effect you want. And you will get... I'm hoping you're going to see it. There's little areas that I possibly would have put more powder on. Try the front now. Okay. Oh, you. Yeah, that's it. There we are. You stay there, I'll come to you. Go on then. There you go. So that's what I've done today, which has still got a little bit of dimpling. And that is when I did the other day, which is a bit smoother. And you can just keep adding as many layers as you, you want. You just keep adding because the one thing I noticed, you know, when we emboss at home, maybe I'll pop it on the floor. Now. Thank you very much. <laughs> when we emboss, you know, we're always very careful not to burn, but it didn't seem to burn, it just melted. So it's obviously the paper that we're burning when we're embossing, not, not the actual powder. So I would say give it a go. You know, when you've got, if you have the kit, then sometimes you have a little sample of embossing powder in the kit. Give it a go with that. And then see if you like it. Then you can go for a bigger pot then. Yeah, and there's lots of different colours that you can use. Oh, so there's some gorgeous So many colors. different things. Sentiments is perfect for, but I guess sort of small die cuts if you've got flowers and things like Absolutely. that as well. Absolutely. You could do the same technique with them. Absolutely. Um, what else? I was going to say something else then. And... It just clearly went out to my head. <laughs> Christine has just said that um, she should drive her sister mad by leaving trails all over the house. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Have we got any more questions? What, what, what's the weirdest place that you've ever found the back of a, a phone pad? In That's my it. house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fair God, enough. I don't know. I used to craft upstairs <laughs> at home. So it would be the bathroom mm -hmm. it would be trailed downstairs <laughs> the washing machine um the dog would have them stuck to her <laughs> there was just everywhere everywhere you could find them in your clothing you know when you take your clothes off at yeah, night you find one up an arm <laughs> somewhere all over the place especially on a big crafting day see mm -hmm. i have one more top tip with a dc oh sheets. go on then and this is actually one i've borrowed from jody so thank you jody for this one she did recently on cream craft she took an adhesive sheet and you can do the whole thing or you can cut it down to a card front size cut yourself some strips of card or paper in different widths lay them out across your adhesive sheet to make yourself like a background but if you leave a gap between some of the pieces you can then apply glitter as well so you'll end up with like a glitter stripe between nice. your papers because it's got that tack for you so it's a nice way to make like a background if you've got a load of pattern paper that you don't know how to use or it doesn't it looks nice together but one piece on its own doesn't you can just cut lots of strips of different nice or different colors so yeah there's another like that top one. tip the other one shall we show the gilding on the edge oh yes let's do that there's your let's one that started one. Back in. Go on, creating a holy, holy mess here, and I no story of my life. This says. Alex <laughs> loves it when we come down here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all day now covered in glitter, right? So, take your bullet tip and just drag just down the edge, being careful not to go into the card. So maybe you have one pen that you use specifically for this. Exactly. Because you are going to end up with that. You little... will have a dip in it. Yeah. It hasn't done it that time. But the more you do it, you will get that dip in the centre. Okay. Nobody breathe, please. I know. 
we have to turn the aircon off upstairs. <laughs> so just lightly tip it into the the gilding flakes. And nice. it does give a really impressive it look. It really does. And it's just that fine little bit of gilded edge. And because you're going on onto the very edge, it does both sides for you as well. There we are. So take off as much as you can. Put the lid back on quickly. <laughs> Put that one away. There we are. over there. This actually, if you've never bought our gilding flakes, that is one one pot of our gilding flakes in there. Yeah. And, and it's it been used. Puffs up. It, uh... It's not just, it's a brand new one. That's the one I use in the office. So give it a little bit of a bath. Just down the edges. Oh, last one. We're going to have to get the hoover out today. I know. I know. There we go. Let's have a dark card behind. There you go. And then, see that little tiny bit? Oh, where are we going? To me, to you. I know. <laughs> Find my focus. There we go. There we go. All down the edges then. You've got that lovely bit of focus. I'm just looking at this on my nail now. Do you do nail art? Mm -hmm. Oh, golden flakes stick beautifully to nails. They do. they do. They do. And you can do an awful lot of nails as well with that. So that's another little quick technique for you. There any you questions? Yeah, any more questions on adhesives? Anything that you want to know? Uh, How do no, you use yours? No more questions. We have had a quick tip from uh, Denise, who said that when she squeezes too much deluxe adhesives on mirror cardstock, she's a damp cotton swab or Q-tip for those over the pond yeah. uh, to clean off the excess. Yeah. So she loves the, the deluxe adhesive. So, Good yeah. tip there. Great tip. We all love deluxe adhesive, let's be honest. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, indeed. It's been fun. Share, share your projects with us because we absolutely love to see what you're making. And I've seen some stunning stuff this weekend. And, and be sure to share with us any techniques that you guys yeah. use. Yeah, drop your tips in below. If you have any craft clinic questions that you'd like to ask for our next one, we don't currently have a topic. So if there's anything, any burning questions about crafting that you want to ask us, let us know and uh, we can build a whole show around it. We certainly will. See you soon. Happy crafting. Bye. Stay with it. Stay with oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. Go on, carry on. I'm ready now. <laughs>